The 12th annual Global Information Technology Report is out. This year it ranks 144 countries to focus on growth and jobs in a hyper-connected world. At first glance, it looks as though North and South are moving farther apart. Well, here to tell us more and what it's all about is Bruno Lanvan. He is the GITR's co-editor and the executive director of INSEAD's European Competitiveness Initiative. Welcome to INSEAD Knowledge. Good afternoon, Jenny. This year, top three, Finland, Singapore, Sweden. Um, Finland and Sweden swapped. Singapore, again, is number two. Why does it keep being number two, and do they want to be number one? It's a very comfortable place to be number two. Uh, the, looking at the rankings of this year in GITR, we see remarkable stability at the top. Uh, we saw already remarkable stability last year. Uh, it is true that if we compare the rankings of the last 12 years since the, uh, the creation of GITR, on average, Singapore has been the champion of the world. They've always been navigating uh, among the very, very top ranks in that, in that list. Uh, what changes this year uh, is clearly the uh, insisting gap that seems to separate those who are the champions of network readiness, uh, the Singapore's, the Nordics uh, of this world, and uh, the rest uh, of the crowd, including, uh, what is surprising, uh, some of the BRICs. And, but let's look at the top ten, if we can. So that would be uh, Finland, Singapore, Sweden, Netherlands, Norway, Switzerland, UK, Denmark, US, Taiwan. Taiwan is new, Canada dropped out. Otherwise, it's been pretty much those top ten. And as you've said, that tends to be a lot of the Nordics and then Singapore. So what is it that categorizes, what does Singapore do that's so, that's so good? What all these countries have done is to develop an ecosystem around IT. That is, they're not just countries who invest a lot in information technology. They're the countries who have developed uh, the skills necessary to take advantage of information technology. They are the countries who have uh, combined public sector and private sector energies to uh, develop information technologies, to develop infrastructure, and to develop usage. And more than that, they are the countries where there's been a buy-in from the population at large. Uh, information technology has been part of daily lives of younger and older generations as well. So it's a societal uh, kind of approach to IT that we see in all these countries who are in the top 10. Now, you mentioned um, the BRICS. How did they do, that's Brazil, um, Russia, India, China, how did, how did they do this year? They did well this year, but not as well as in previous years. What we had seen in previous years, that is until 2011, 2012, was a very rapid catching up of the BRICS. They were moving up very, very fast uh, to join the first tier of the countries ranked in, in GITR. What we see this year is that they seem to hit a wall. They seem to slow down in their ability to actually improve their readiness to use information technology and translate that readiness into economic and, and social impact. Uh, and this is true for, for China, for India, for Brazil and for Russia. We see that uh, their aggregate ranking uh, evolves around 50 uh, in the ranking and this seems to be stuck there. Now, the GITR ranking analyzes network infrastructure, affordability, so-called knowledge skills, which are related to all of this, um, and it looks at the markets and the regulatory frameworks. Um, why, why is this gap getting wider between North and South? What about these criteria are, are different? What we, what we see is indeed that uh, what has been uh, uh, called the digital divide uh, more than two decades ago uh, is indeed a very stubborn phenomenon. We don't see it so much in infrastructure and equipment, because there the gap is diminishing rather than, than broadening. Uh, emerging countries are investing more and they are getting more out of their infrastructure. Yet what is increasing is content. It's the ability to translate ICT investment into uh, genuine content, into something that makes sense for your own businesses, especially small and medium-sized uh, enterprises, which are prevalent in, in those countries, uh, and enables you to create jobs and to improve standards of living. So there, there seems to be an obstacle which is probably bigger than anticipated 10 years ago, when most uh, people would believe that if you develop the infrastructure, something would happen. 
something is happening, but more could be, uh, could be happening with higher levels of skills, better interconnection between the sectors in the, of the economy, and a number of other factors which have to do with the eco-socio-economic system uh, of a country. That's largely what um, policymakers w would do. So what, what needs to happen in this regard to, it's one thing to install the, the, hard, the hardware, it's another thing to be able to use it and use it properly. So what, what policies do we need? If the lesson of the champions is of uh, any use in this context, that is, the, um, in each region uh, we see champions. So we can't say Europe is more advanced than in America, which is true in average, without looking into what's happening within these, uh, these regions. And each, in each and every one of these regions, there are champions and there are laggards. So if we look, for instance, at the Middle East, we see countries like the United Arab Emirates, like Qatar, uh, like Saudi Arabia to a large extent, who are ahead of the pack. And then we see uh, other countries in the MENA region who seems to be stuck at the level where they were still two, three years ago. And one of the uh, elements we see is that in the, uh, in the champion countries, there's a better interconnection between what happens in the ICT field and what happens in other sectors. Uh, very often, this is easier to implement in, in countries where there's less baggage. That is, if you have uh, an education sector or a manufacturing sector which has uh, accumulated baggage and in terms of rigidities, in terms of difficulties to change the regulatory framework or the employment scene, uh, it, mo it becomes more difficult to actually take advantage uh, from uh, investment in, in ICT. How has the index changed to keep up with the times? The partners involved meet regularly to try and think of in which way we could improve the data, the data collection, not just because the, the focus has, has changed in economic terms, but also become, because more data became available from one source or another. And uh, every year there are incremental changes. There's one, two variables which are, uh, on which we can improve uh, in terms of country coverage, in terms of uh, uh, detail of the, the, what we try to describe. A major change happened uh, last year where we introduced the impact pillar into the, uh, into the model. So the model now includes uh, a number of data regarding the economic, the economic impact and the social impact of investment in information technology. Were there any surprises this year? This has been a remarkably unsurprising year. Uh, the uh, stability has been uh, remarkable at the top, as it was last year, and we've seen this phenomenon whereby the rapid acceleration uh, we had seen in BRICS uh, in particular has slowed down. So overall, if we compare the 2013 picture to the 2012 picture, uh, it shows remarkable stability. Bruno Lanvin, thank you very much for being with us on NCAD Knowledge. Thank you.